Sparkle Squad, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Jasmine and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about the ISU Awards Ceremony. And this award ceremony didn't happen too long ago. It happened on July 11th. And if you guys don't know what the ISU Awards Ceremony is, it's the ceremony that the ISU held and it is for figure skaters and coaches where figure skaters and coaches got nominated for different, like, categories like there was best costume of the year or and there was like most valuable skater and for the coaches there's also like the best coaches and stuff like that and it was a pretty good award ceremony i watched it and my favorite part about it was probably that charlie white and his wife were the hosts of the award ceremony and if you guys didn't already know about that charlie white and mel davis are my favorite pairs like ice dance team because I love them so much they're literally so amazing but anyways without further ado let's get started okay so the article that I found mainly talks about Yuzuru Hanyu and if you guys didn't already know Yuzuru Hanyu was the skater who won the most valuable skater award at the ISU awards ceremony but anyways let's get started with reading the article what we learned from the first ISU skating awards Hanyu Yuzuru's status in figure skating were underlined at the awards hosted by Tanith and Charlie White, which celebrated the best of this sport. The first ISU Skating Awards, hosted virtually during this time of pandemic-related mayhem, were a huge success. The 2019-2020 season will always have an asterisk next to it, curtailed as it was before the World Championships due to COVID-19, but there is enough action to give the awards meaning and authority. With few exceptions, the stars of the sport were nominated in six category shortlists decided equally by fans, media, and ISU members casting online votes from December 1st, 2019 to February 10th, 2020. One category, the Lifetime Achievement Award, wasn't decided in an online vote, with that honor going to four-time world champion Kurt Browning. Important figures off the ice were also recognized with Shine, Shai Lin Bourne, hopefully I said that correctly, named Best Choreographer. But there's only one place to start. And then they have this picture of something that the ISU Figure Skating posted on Twitter. I'll put a picture on the screen so that you guys can read it as well. But it says, History is made as Yuzuru Hanyu wins Most Valuable Skater at the first edition of the ISU Skating Awards. Blowing our minds and capturing our hearts every time he hits the ice, here's to our newly crowned most valuable skater winner, Yuzuru Hanyu. Hanyu remains the sport's biggest draw. Yes, Nathan Chen may have carried all before him in 2019-2020, just as he did the previous season, but no one draws a crowd like Yuzuru Hanyu. The double Olympic champion is still figure skating's main attraction, and that tag was underlined by him being named most valuable skater. That decision was made by the six-person ISC jury comprising two-time World Pairs champion Eric Radford, World Champions Chen Lu, Todd Eldredge, and Ando Miki, hopefully I said those correctly, five-time European champion Surya Bonnelly, and Olympic ice dance gold medalist Tatiana Navka. Hopefully I said that correctly as well. Hanyu's hardcore fan base, aka the Fanyus, are like nothing else in the sport and can be found queuing up whether he is competing. If you want proof, check out what happened when he turned 25 during December's Grand Prix Final in Turin. And then there's this video and I'm going to post it on the screen so that you guys can watch it. It wasn't the best of seasons for the man from Sendai who was beaten by Chen in the Grand Prix Final before finishing second to Shumo Uno, the Japanese Nationals. But he did complete his super slam of major international titles at the four continents, having reverted to his gold medal winning programs from the Pyeongchang 2018 Winter Olympics. Hanyu was talked of his hopes of landing a quad axle, provided he can stay fit, something he has struggled to do in recent years. 
Perhaps this pandemic enforced break and enabled him to look after his body, in particular the ankle, which has bothered him on and off since a practice fall at the 2017 NHK Trophy. That could give him the ammunition to close the gap on Chen, and then who knows. Hanyu admitted that he finds the pressure from his devoted fans sometimes tough, although he tries to respond to their expectations at 120% level. During the online show, Chen said, I'm a figure skater and I love to figure skate, so that's ultimately my overarching focus. All the rest of it comes with skating, and I understand that it takes more responsibility and other attention to smaller details outside of skating. At the end of the day, I feel as tough skating as the main key to all of that, and so that's where my focus is. I love it every single day, and I look forward to being able to get back into competition. While Chen is almost machine-like on the ice, Hanyu can feed off the crowd and fitness provided. It would be foolish to write off the two-time Olympic gold medalist as he bids to get back on top once more. Here talks about how Orser gives insight into his training method. Hanyu and Chen's respective trainers, Brian Orser and Raphael Arichunian, hopefully I said that correctly, I'm not so sure how you're supposed to pronounce it, were nominated for Coach of the Year, but the award went to Itiri Tutberetsi. The Russian looks after Olympic champion Elena Zagitova and two-thirds of last season's dominant 3A, Best Newcomer winner Elena Kosternaya and Anna Shiverkova, after Alexander Trusova left to join Evgenia Plushenko in May. While she was not available to speak to the host, Tanith and Charlie White on the live show also spoke at length about how he and his team at the Toronto Cricket Club work with their skaters and why he is so emotional during his charges performances. For me, I want these athletes to be the best that they can be and to bring out the best that they have. That may result in a gold medal, that may result in top 10, but to see that happen and to be part of that is important. Orser said, We can't do this on our own. We have this amazing team at our rink, as do all the other coaches, with Tracy Wilson and our group of coaches we're really fortunate to have. In my opinion, some of the best in the world. So every day we live it. I'm on the ice with them, doing step sequences with them. I'm chasing them when it comes to those run-throughs. That's really what it takes. And when you see me at the boards and I'm living the moment, that's because I've been living the moment for the last seven or eight years. Evgenia Medvedeva left Tutberetsu to join Oyster soon after her silver medal behind Zagitova at Pyeongchang. And some of the Canadians' comments were clearly informed by his experience with the two-time world champion. He said, the number one thing for us is you to have a strong foundation. A strong foundation of skating and skating skills, balance and body awareness. Everything's come, everything comes from ice up, so whether it's a quadruple lutz or it's a beautiful transition through choreography, you have to start from the beginning. Even if you start with the top skater, they may migrate to different training centers. We start at the beginning and we get to the foundation going. A lot of them go, wow, we never saw skating that way. And then they can do the tricks. They can do the choreography. Figure skating will always continue to develop. It's up to the athletes and us to try and stay ahead of the curve. It's kind of nice to be in a position to be able to help manage that and direct where that's going, Brian Osher said. Papadakis and Cesar Rohn in a league of their own. Gabriella Papadakis and Guilame Cesar Rohn, hopefully I said that correctly, may have missed out on the big award, but they did take the most entertaining program going for their 1980s workout-inspired fame rhythm dance. Olympic gold is only honored to elude from this far, with the French pair already four-time world champions. Their highly original free dance to works by Icelandic ambient musician Alfa Alfer Arnold, hopefully I said that correctly, also wowed fans in 2019-2020, and Cesarone explained what helps keep the duo at top of their games. He said, we try to always skate with our hearts. That's one of the main things we can focus on. We always try to stay authentic to ourselves and bring things on the ice that come from our hearts and our soul. And I think as long as we always do that, we will always be passionate about the ice and choreographing and skating together. Seeing other skaters like Yuzu and Nathan skate, even though it's not ice dance, it inspires us so much to push the boundaries as well. To push the boundaries of the sport, but also the artistry as well. Now talks about format tweaks for the future. 
The event itself went pretty much according to plan, but there were clearly changes which could be made for future. The award of best costume to ice dancers Madison Chalk and Evan Bates certainly raised some eyebrows in the Twitter sphere. While the designer of the outfits, Matthew Caron, hopefully I said that correctly, was mentioned and featured in a video during the live show, many including Pianchang, Paris bronze medalist, and team gold medalist, Megan DeHamel, felt he was worthy of greater acclaim. With four separate competitions in figure skating, it's always going to be difficult to combine them in one set of awards. But Paris definitely missed out with no partnership. Not even Grand Prix Final winners and regaining world champions Su Wenjing and Han Kong, hopefully I said that correctly, making a single shortlist. The concept of most valuable skater may also need some refining. In most sports like basketball, the MVP award goes to the best or most influential player on the competition. But with Chen, the dominant skater of the past two years, Hanyu's award must be more of a reflection of his popularity and important impact on the sport. Indeed, the ISU describes the award as honoring the single skater or pair or ice dance couple who is best managed to increase the level of popularity of figure skating with their fan base, media attention, and sponsor appreciation. Is it fair that Chen goes away virtually empty-handed when he has won every major competition since Pyeongchang? And what happens next year when Kostrinaya is no longer a newcomer? Questions for another day, perhaps, but the ISU Skating Awards were met favorably by figure skating fans and seem here to stay. I want to say congratulations to everyone who won an award in the first ever ISU Figure Skating Award Ceremony. I'm so proud and happy for all of you guys. This is the end of the video. I hope that you guys enjoyed. I want you guys to comment down below if you guys were able to watch the ISU Figure Skating Awards. I watched it and it was really amazing. It was pretty entertaining also. If you guys haven't watched it or if you guys didn't have a chance to watch it, I'll link the award ceremony down below in the description box so that you guys can take some time out of your day if you want so that you can check it out. And also, I will link this article down below if you guys want to read it for yourselves. But anyways, also don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. Love you guys. Bye!